I'm Rolene Marks. This is the Israel Brief where you join me every Monday to Thursday for your top stories from Israel and beyond. And of course, we're always brought to you by our great partner, Lay of the Land. So let's take a look at those top stories and we begin with the story that was giving many of us lactose intolerance and that is Ben and Jerry's. Have we heard the end of this Ben and Jerry's, Mishagas? One could only hope. Well, yesterday, in a significant blow to the ice cream manufacturer, a New York judge ruled that he rejects their injunction against their parent company, Unilever. So let's break it down. What actually happened? Ben and Jerry's just over a year ago made that uh, astounding declaration that they would no longer be selling their ice cream to East Jerusalem and the West Bank, claiming that that is the occupied territory. Of course, they still sell their ice cream in places with very, very questionable human rights records, but that is a whole other story. Their parent company, Unilever, stepped in saying that the decisions that Ben and Jerry's were making were operational and financial, and therefore they had a right to step in and get involved. Now, Ben and Jerry's sued them for infringing or breaking the clause of their agreement, saying that they still retain their rights to an independent board that would make these decisions. But yesterday, Manhattan Justice Andrew Carter ruled that he does not support Ben and Jerry's uh, request for an injunction against Unilever to block the sales of their ice cream to the West Bank and to East Jerusalem. The justice ruled that this would not harm anybody or confuse consumers with uh, their marketing. Now, what actually had happened that raised the ire of Ben & Jerry is, is that Unilever concluded an agreement or reached an agreement with the Israeli manufacturer Avi Zinger to continue to sell his ice cream, which of course man, um, employs many Palestinians, and it would be done with Hebrew and Arabic branding. So, you know, most people would see this as a win-win situation. I think also impacting greatly on this was the fact that many states enacted their BDS or their anti-BDS legislation legislation, including the state of New York, where this injunction was uh, filed. Now, uh, this would have cost Unilever hundreds of millions worth of pension investments, which uh, just goes to show boycott, divestment and sanctions are just bad business all around. So this is a sweet victory for everybody who is supporting a discussion, discourse, peace, and the right of Palestinians and Israelis to eat a sweet treat. So hopefully this will be the end of the Ben and Jerry's Mishagas, which has left many of us with acid reflux. In other news, Russia's Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov, speaking earlier today, condemned Israel's airstrikes on targets in Syria. He said that he condemns the dangerous airstrikes in Syria. Now, just a reminder that Israel strikes targets in Syria that we know are to be uh, either Iranian targets or weapons, munitions, transportations destined for Iranian proxies that would attack Israel or Israeli sovereign territory. In a statement that you really cannot make up, Sergei Lavrov went on to say that Israel should respect the United Nations Security Council resolutions and that Israel's airstrikes are a violation of Syrian sovereign territory and integrity. I guess nobody pointed Mr. Lavrov in the direction of Ukraine. And uh, nobody has reminded Mr. Lavrov of the resolutions against Russia at the United Nations. Oh, wait. And we now talk Turkey and Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas is headed to Turkey today. Let's hope that we won't have a situation that we had with Germany last week when the Palestinian Authority President paid that country a visit. 
The Turkish foreign minister said that the Palestinians were supportive of the decision of Turkey to renew ties with Israel and that Turkey will be announcing who the ambassador they will be sending to Israel will be in the next couple of days. Now, what is very interesting is that last week Hamas also tweeted out their support of the renewal of ties. And the Turkish foreign minister Kavatoglu gave a reasonable explanation for this. He said the Palestinians support this because they have the assurances from Turkey that Turkey, while renewing ties and deepening relations with the Jewish state, will also work to ensure the Palestinian cause. So uh, we wait with bated breath to see how this is going to continue. And our last story, of course, a positive news story for today. The first Israeli flight to fly over Saudi airspace, this time headed to a non-Gulf destination, made its maiden voyage. So this was an Arkea flight flying all the way to the Seychelles and its flight time cut by 20 minutes by flying over Saudi airspace. Now, of course, so we are expecting that there possibly could be an announcement from the Gulf state of Oman also about allowing Israeli-bound flights to use their airspace, and that will also significantly cut down on travel time. Good news indeed, especially if you fly to or from Israel, from places like India or New Zealand or Australia or any of that part of the world. So that brings us to the end of today's top stories. But don't forget to check out our website at www.layoftheland.online, our Facebook community at Lottel site. Please like us, follow us, share our content. Our YouTube channel is at The Israel Brief. Please consider sharing, liking, and of course, subscribing by clicking on that red subscribe button. And you can follow us on Twitter at Lay of the Land 5. That's at Lay of the Land 5. And with that, I'm Rolene Marks. This is the Israel Brief. And join me again tomorrow for the Wednesday edition of the Israel Brief. Take care.